ಸಿದ್ಧಾಂತ ಗೋಚರ ತಂ ಅಗೋಚರ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಪರಮಾನಂದ ಸದ್ಗುರು ಪ್ರಣತಸ್ಮ್ಯಹಂ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಔ ಐ ಬಾವ್ ಡೌನ್ ಟು ದ ಇಟರ್ನಲ್ ಗುರು ಹುಸ್ ನೇಚರ್ ಇಸ್ ಬ್ಲಿಸ್ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ and who is the embodiment of bliss and wisdom who can be realized only from the import of the vedanta and who is beyond the reach of speech and mind om peace 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 so this is the month when he is vashishta jo we are talking about the guru vyasa the vyasa the eternal guru considered a guru in the amongst the monastics tradition of india that is in this month and it is coming soon and that day is celebrated as the day of guru purnima the full moon night when is his birth was there so people celebrate that to remember that special teacher who has given us so much treasure that can remove the ignorance of people of every country every land the ignorance in which we are down and to which we feel that we are a limited personality bound in body and mind and this is our petty existence and we are only this from that to get release from that bondage to feel that we are we are something more than that that is the teaching we get it from byaso who collected the, all the vedas and divided into four segments we call the, the division of this rig veda sama veda yajur veda it was all organized by him not in the computer age but in his mind remembering all the vedas and then grouping them together so it is a main thing is that the teacher who removes the ignorance and leads us to the path of wisdom that is called the guru in spiritual tradition sami vivekananda pointed out that every soul <coughs> is destined to be perfect then every being in the end will attain the state of perfection whatever we are now is the result of our act- acts and thoughts in the past and whatever we shall be in the future will be the result of what we think and do but this shaping of our own destinies does not preclude our receiving help from outside nay in the vast majority of cases such help is absolutely necessary and when it comes the higher power and possibilities of the soul are quickened spiritual life is awakened growth is animated and man becomes holy and perfect in the end so is a beautiful description of the purpose of who is called the guru and the need of guru in our life it is what a what a beautiful statement that we are all destined to be perfect at this point we are all feeling un- imperfect 
because we have this lacking this knowledge we are lacking our wisdom our discrimination we are lacking devotion this is our present condition and not only that in this world we are roaming like an ignorant person and being born in this life we do not know where to go what destination to go it is like the cow when it's born baby cow born have you seen that baby corn in cow is searching for the udder and does not know where is it that that udder is so is hitting knocking his head <laughs> here there 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 and ultimately eh, someone helps the baby cow to the udder see it is like that someone is searching for peace searching for joy searching for eternal freedom from all bondage which we are destined to do that we are divine and we are destined to reach our dest- that freedom but we do not know how to get it in the life's struggle we get confused and we are searching every nooks and corner that's why shankaracharya has also defined that having this rare human birth one must have to think of this freedom mumukshattam and then this is a blessed opportunity to take shelter in a divine spiritual entity that's called mahapurusha and pu- putting ourselves in this condition shankara says that being confused in the life struggle like this everyone should struggle to come out of its bondage shankara in the viveka chudamani says ato vimuktai prajati to vidwan the man of wisdom vidwan does not mean scholar educated people that's called vidwan but vidwan means who has the wisdom and inner questioning has developed in the heart that i want i want that freedom that's why he should struggle prajati to vidwan that that intelligent man or intelligent woman should make an effort and then what they will do santang mahantang samupetu deshikam then he will reach a person shanta who is detached from the world who has got his own freedom santang mahantam the great soul and he is a teacher acharya he has realized himself and then then he will try to ask for some guidance te you know upadishtartho samahita atma then approaching the teacher then we'll get some lesson and then having that lesson the teachings one will get absorbed his mind will to keep more focused into the teaching and get absorbed into it and the this following the instruction of the teacher the student will ultimately pave his way towards infinite freedom and then that attitude has been expressed here swami ji that vivekananda that every one of us are destined to be perfect and every being in the end no one will be left that's a great hope for us everyone may not today may not tomorrow but at some point of time every one of us will attain that state of perfection and that perfected state is that we are divine we are pure we are limitless we are birthless we are deathless and we are the source of eternal joy and blessings so that knowledge must have to come without attaining that knowledge this life is meaningless because 
having a treasure of million, billion, trillion dollars worth and we are all spending our days like a pauper with five dollars, ten dollars eating here, sleeping there and begging for more something, another twenty dollars uh, but we are infinite so that is the teaching what it transmitted from the spiritual teacher and and, and, and also it is important, whatever we are, we are the result of our past. And what will be in future, Vivekananda's idea, and also the Eastern idea, will be the result of what we think and do now. And therefore, we need what to do now. We know. We all crave for happiness, joy, eternal. Who don't? There is no fool in the world who does not want. A thief, a burglar, a bad person, a holy person. Everyone is seeking for that eternal joy, eternal peace. But do not know which direction to go. So, he says, this shaping of our destinies, how to shape our destiny, our future, our life, in such a way that I can do it myself. Yes, you try yourself. You, you have the power to do that. But sometimes we do not know the right direction to go. It is like you travel with a GPS in hand and put your address and then you can relax. It will take you. Of course, this GPS sometimes does not know where the road is closed. <laughs> That is this GPS. <laughs> but this God GPS, <laughs> God positioning system, <laughs> so <laughs> that GPS does not fail. It will take, if you can put <laughs> in your computer, <laughs> in your cell phone, and then go. <laughs> you, you click go, and then you start. It will take in the right direction. So this, this, Direction is necessary. What will be the right way to go? Not to spend long time wielding here and there in the knocking uh, every door to find the truth. So the shaping of our character, the shaping of our life, it does not preclude receiving help from outside. We may sometimes think, why? Uh, so, um, um, to Sri Ramakrishna, Mahindralal Sarkar, the doctor used to come. He was a scientist and he was a doctor by profession. And he, Girish goes, is to say Ramakrishna is God. Uh, he said, you are spoiling this uh, good person. This good person was honest and simple. You are making him God, 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 and here is Avatar, you are spoiling him. And he said that, why shall I salute a person? Look like me. And I shall salute him, bow down my head to him. What's that? Yes, that is the question. Yes, we look alike. But there is a greater manifestation of spirituality and lesser manifestation of spirituality. When we are in a position, we need some help. Someone can guide us to move further who will be the guide? That's a different thing. He should have his own journey in the spiritual track. And he has achieved some of his experiences regarding the validity of the path and the end result to attain. So, it is Swami Vivekananda says is not uncommon that one should seek some guidance from outside with one's own effort. Two things. One's own effort, I will find the truth. That should be the crying need. Shankaracharya was much more vivid in describing this, that saṃśāra-dābhānalatāpa-taptam vidhūyamānam duradishtabhātai That person who is being burned into the life, in the scorching displeasure of this worldly existence. This experience of this life 
with all the hatred call the mean unkind experiences of life what we get when one goes to that experience and gets tired and it appears like a bonfire and he wants to run away run away for the in search of cool sensation of the ocean or river samsharo it is like a dabanal world appears to be bonfire that means the experience of life is such that it did not give us the joy and pleasure rather it is all a burning sensation no peace no joy no tranquility when one will be shattered like that in the life situation or feel that this world is not giving me enough what i want and then he will run for a person who can guide and lead us to the freedom path of freedom when it comes this this help can come and when it comes the higher power and possibilities of the soul are quickened when we get such help from such spiritual power people who have attained wisdom or who have marched in the path of spirituality quite a distance they can guide us because they have run to the path which i have to tread tread on so to take this help is not a bad thing to go to ramakrishna is not a bad thing because he lives in this ecstatic state of samadhi and absolute bliss so to follow them these are the world gurus the christ buddhas ramas krishnas they are world gurus they work in a subtle way after their demise of the body also and that impact moves on and on and helps redeeming the people but in our lifetime even there would be some people who can help us so to take help and make our journey much more clear and straight is very much important so that guidance that to awaken who awakens who starts up our spiritual emotions who can give a boosting to our journey that is called the guru also defined guru is that who removes the darkness and ignorance from our mind and illumines the light the lamp of light which is within us so this is sami vivekananda said that we can take help from this type of people for our spiritual awakening and getting help from them our growth our 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 normal growth it becomes animated more and we become holy and holier and holier and holier every day day by day and we transform ultimately to that which is the holiness itself the quickening impulse some he continued that it can be derived from books also we read many inspirational books people may put this question why do i need to go to any man any person any any spiritual person you are talking now why should we go well then i can get it from the books you read the bible it is there you have the uh, dhammapad you have um, all the upanishads you got the all the teachings of so many scriptures in hinduism buddhism so enough so intellectually we can learn and get our way out swami vivekananda says this quickening impulse cannot be derived from books shankaracharya also said it is not book learning book learning can take us to certain flight it is good we from the books we get inspiration we get the way how to analyze uh, separate out which is husk and this same place but to live to little light it should come from lamp to lamp 
So there he says, the soul can only receive impulse from another soul and from nothing else. We may get little inspiration, many of us in our life, how we came to Vedanta. If we ask, many of you will say, oh, we read that book and that inspiration came. No. Yes, that's good. But that inspiration is a starting point. But you need to have some tangible spiritual personality where the spiritual truth is getting manifested more and more in a glowing light. So, and from that light you can lit your lamp. It is this, it is not the, the suppose we will read the mantra, Guru and our mantra is the next, we will come to mantra, Guru, we get mantra from Guru. But Guru mantra is also written in the books. Now Google has helped us so much. <laughs> Whatever you want, there is no question. Uh, in our breakfast table we see that any serious question comes, before we put the question, Google gives the response. <laughs> so if it is available, why to go to a physical teacher? And why to do so much austerities? This is available. So that mantra you start chanting? Yeah, that will not do. <laughs> it is written, but there is no force in it. The force comes from practice. And if one practices that mantra himself, and then that power generates into it. It is generated. That's why it is called seed. Seed has the power to sprout and then be a plant and be a big tree. But it is not mere in the books, in the reading it will come. Where it is, it is a power should be transmitted from one to the other. That is the lineage comes. In spiritual tradition they will find that it is a lineage from teacher to teacher to teacher to their student to their student. So this is, is both an important. Books can do a little help, but books cannot give liberation. Therefore, it cannot be derived from the soul can only receive impulse from another soul and from nothing else. We may study books all our lives, we may become very intellectual, but in the end we find that we have not developed at all spirituality. Then what happens? One negative side comes, I have read all the books, and create more confusion. Nowadays it is the problem of Google because you get all the books, all philosophies, little of Buddhism, little of Vedanta, little of uh, Tantra, little of um, uh, what is called Vaishnavism and all mixed together, then we get confused what to, what to, what to follow. And every path is right, but every path, what is suited for me, what is good for me, who will tell that? So, this is the point, here is the need of a teacher who can understand my condition and who can help me to move in the direction. It, the, as Swami Vivekananda said, that, that seed sprouts into a plant. The gardener does not make the plant grow. He cannot pull the plant every day, hey, another inch, come out. It does not do like that. Growth happens spontaneously. The, 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 the plant have to absorb the available sources, resources, the water, the fertilizer, the sun, the air, and then make it a part of the life. So, its dual function is there. One is the student, another is the teacher. One is the plant and who is fetching fetch, that plant to grow. So, a, this junction of these two, the ideal student should be seeking for the truth, teacher should be capable of giving. Otherwise, Ramakrishna's example, you know, that he said that he, he heard the croaking sound of, a, of some, uh, what do you call, frog. And inquired, what is this condition? Go and search, and you see that ordinary uh, what you call water snake have tried to grab one frog <laughs> and it can neither swallow is the problem of this snake and the frog also 
is in this trouble, caught into trap. So, but Sri Ramakrishna said, if it is the cobra, it bites, and in three croaking, is dead. <laughs> that means the ego of the uh, <laughs> of the frog is gone. That means a good teacher, a spiritual teacher like Ramakrishna, uh, like great spiritual teacher like Buddhas and Krishnas, they can just with the three crocs, it does not need three crocs. They will look at somebody and they will be liberated. No. But it does not happen with all. It needs a Vivekananda there. You look at that, Ramakrishna and Vivekananda is a perfect match where he can have instant experience. Tutapuri came to Ramakrishna's life, a teacher, and student is Ramakrishna. And with the utterance of the mantra that thou art that, and Ramakrishna went to a sixth plane and standing there. And with little effort, that also gone, he went into Nirvikalpa Samadhi. So, it is the ideal student and ideal teacher is the perfect solution for immediate freedom. But we are not all PhD students. So we are maybe someone in our cap capability, we have some teacher who can guide us very well. Too big teacher is also not good for us sometimes, is it not? You get a Einstein to teach a fourth grade boy, it will be much difficult for the fourth grade boy as also for, the, for Einstein. <laughs> for us, it is someone who can understand our, our condition, our mind, uh, relate to that level, it is uh, a, a much better. So the point is that, this student uh, should be also very much important. He will have to play or she will have to play a very important role. And she should have Shraddha. Shraddha is the student's quality. Faith. Faith and trust in the teachings of uh, the instruction we get. Suppose if I have no faith in the mantra itself, I have no faith in the teacher itself, so, it will not fructify because the mantra will be some words and instruction. It will not appeal to my mind and I will not be responding and I will not follow the instruction. So, it is Shraddha is necessary and students should have the four qualities. It's called Sadhana. Viveka, Vairagya, Shama, etc., Mumukshu, all these good qualities, discriminative eye. The eye of discrimination I've generated in the student. This is permanent, this is impermanent. I want to seek the eternal. So that sense should come. And then a urge should come. I want to hold on to what is good, what is truth. And that's, that's the Vairagya means detachment comes from which is unreal to hold on to what is real. And then comes the some character. Spirituality is best foundation is character. Honesty, sincerity, self-control, truthfulness, non-injury, trying to mind the calm and serene in different contexts, depending on the divine for our all the problems of life sometimes making our best effort then to depend on. So those are the qualities. And that type of student who has tattva jiggashu, who has the craving and questioning to know and expect, experience and understand that tattva, the truth, that, that satchidan on the truth. They, if he goes to a guru, uposhid, a Shankara says, Upashidaid Gurum Pragam. The student, this type of student, should go to a teacher who is wise with proper etiquette. We should not go to a teacher like a friend, Hello, I want mantra, give me mantra. It's not like that. It is, it is, there is a question of humility. There is a question of uh, approach, how to approach a teacher. A secular knowledge is one thing. 
But spiritual knowledge is different. For spiritual knowledge, it is said that student should have that query and humility. Humility to the teachings and the instructions as also to the person who has who is doing that. Otherwise what will happen? It is not like learning physics, chemistry, math or any material science. You don't need any character there. You go to a good teacher. After every oh, everyone finishing the high school, everyone searches for different options, which school they will go. No? All the students after that, before going to college, they have this uh, effort. Oh, I want to study particular one science. Which university is good for that? Which teacher is good? And then you can do that. And the teacher, you don't have to look at the character of the teacher. You go and he's efficient in his subject. Whatever is personal character, that's okay. But it does not stop acquiring the knowledge of the subject I want to study in the university. But in spiritual life it is not so. You have to go to a teacher. Who is a teacher? A teacher's quality is also very demanding. But we are, the whole world is filled with teachers. No one is a student. That's the problem. <laughs> it is Sri Ramakrishna said, Guru, Mile, Lakh, Lakh. The teachers are available in hundreds and thousands. Chelana Mile, Ek. <laughs> there is rarely, rarely find a student, genuine student. That means to learn is the question and to teach. Teaching, not the intellectual teaching. It is not the theological teaching in the seminary or in a university to give a stamp of PhD. That's good. That's, that has its own place. But for spiritual life, it is not. Because it gives only intellectual satisfaction. It can make you great among other intellectuals. You are a greater scholar than others. But here, no reflection of the truth. Only intellectually you are clear. That's a great development, of course. But that is not enough. That's why teacher is very important there. And teacher's characters are also very important there. I should be pure, he should have no intention of getting anything. So, his character, his life will be dedicated to God. He or she will be only thinking for the good of humanity or good of the others, not for any material gain material prosperity and this is life is important. Life of a teacher should be very very important. It should be pure and it should be dedicated to God. It has no place of being himself drowned into ignorance and worldliness trying to guide others. Kathopanishad says Suppose a blind person says, okay, follow me, I will take you. And if he takes another blind man to follow, both are flying, and as the natural con conclusion is that one falls into the well, deep well, and the another person falls over it. So it is double danger. So as it happens, so a person who have not developed spirituality and have not developed their character should we should not go to them because that is dark I blind person is guiding the blind so that is but but if if we go to a real teacher like you see look at that our this Ramakrishna tradition this Vedanta tradition so rich with spirituality then don't understand anything but spirituality we le read the books of Swami Shivananda hmm. Sri Ramakrishna's disciple. Totally intoxicated in God. Anyone is going, giving them in their presence, they are feeling spiritual uplift. And then giving them initiation, guiding them in their spiritual path. And totally pure, 100% pure soul. 
the no tint of world and worldliness in their character so ideal teacher it is said a teacher will be satriyo abrijino akamahata bhumbavida uttama baba four qualities has been given abrijino the bridge the del be no sin in his life that means a pure life shutriyo the teacher should know what is the essence of all the scriptures what vedas are talking about what upanishad is talking about so many language so much complicated ideas are given but what is the essential meaning of all these statements god realization realize the truth that is the meaning so many ways it is said you get confused into different line no pin pointed essence of the scriptures so shrotriyo he has memorized the scriptures not only in the brain but he has understood the import of what is the import of bible what is the import of dhammapada what is the import of upanishads what is the import of bhagavad gita whole book i don't want to read if i read whole life will go that's good for inspiration but if we don't understand the meaning and purpose and import and why we have to hit what is the goal of it so the teacher should know that satriyo he has understood that that god realization is the only goal realizing our divine nature which we are missing now it is not gone anywhere it is here now but i don't feel it so how to connect with that divine treasure which is within us so that is the goal removal of the ignorance that is the goal and how to do it then will come so guru should know the essential meaning of the scriptures essential meaning and the directly what the scripture is asking us to do satya abrijina it is from all sinful activity negative by sin there is no sin in this vedanta it is a negative activity lower truth living in the lower truth he has understood no this is not and in his character it is ab, oh, it is washed away abrijino oh kama hato he is not buffeted by the desires expectations desires and expectations these are the worldly ideas no and 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 the world moves on this worldly ideas it is that whenever you know that's why it is said whenever you go to spiritual uh, centers and ask for 500 dollar for this and 800 dollar 1000 dollar for this eh? there is a business side of it and uh, there you have to think that how much 800 dollar spirituality you can get it but of course if you go to somewhere there is no price tag you may think it is worthless also huh but that genuine spirituality that is the thing needed and that is not with any ulterior motive the teacher should not be performing this spiritual training or anything with any ulterior motive of material gain money wealth name fame power position these the teacher should be free from this and ultimately akamahata and abrijino akamahata brahmavidottama that will be the ideal teacher he will be the highest among the knowers of truth that means he will be always absorbed in the truth in our tradition we have seen such swamis no great swamis who are totally absorbed in that in the truth they don't care for anything else and when they do anything for the disciples or the students they out of love out of compassion out of their bounty of their heart to they see the suffering of us huh or shankaracharya also says when a student comes running like that being suffering in the pain and agonies of life huh and when they approach 
then the teacher out of compassion out of his love he bestows the highest wisdom to the student to make that person free from the entanglement of bondage and suffering so this this teacher's character should be so pure that it is a gift of love gift of just a blessing for thinking about oh that person is also in ignorance and if i can help anyway and it is service to god himself so this teacher's attitude should be this but the student's character also has been mentioned that that this all these practices guru's instruction will be successful when shankara according to shankara it says vairagyam cha mumukshatyam tibran yashatu vidyate tasminne vartavantasu phalo vantas samadaya vairagyo who has the detachment the student who have the detachment detachment means live in the world go through it but sees things it comes and goes but my goal is that i am to make my journey this is journey i am going through things will come in life happiness misery pleasure pain trouble sometimes good sometimes bad these are all coming but i am going to that destiny and that vairagya and i want to liberate i don't get want to entangle here and there it is my journey i am going through but my target is that end of realization when this type of intense feeling for reaching the target is there tibram tibram is intense yes so to be that for him the advice when it is given by the teacher it becomes meaningful and purposeful they can achieve they can they can grab the meaning of it and they can grasp it that means he is a fit candidate but in this this also you know this all this advice one can give we can get many instructions but to make it purposeful to realize god what is the factor normally we find that someone will do it for me by some touch uh, by some easy process i can buy it by any other means by money by uh, some something material no rama in the bujoga vasis to we are reading their yoga bhushta the guru the teacher is advising you know rama this advice given to you it is only as a customary thing i am telling you upadesha kramo rama vyavastha matra palanam gyaptastu karanam shuddham shishya pragna eva kevalam the teacher says here the teacher is vasishta the guru of rama he says that you know this uh, this instructions what i am giving to you is merely to honor the traditional path but the wisdom you will attain the wisdom how not by my advice it may come it may go <laughs> for see <laughs> we hear so many things how much we can retain so it is upadesha the advice which we get it is good it stimulates us for the moment but to live in that way and to follow that instruction you go to doctor doctor gives you some prescription and now it is doctors give too much medicine so we always come up back and start the google searching what are the good effect bad effect this that we reject we don't take certain medicine we take certain medicine doctor has given one instruction but we choose our own and then go back to doctor doctor said what happened well these are the medicines did you eat did you did you take what did they? oh i don't like this they are, that is bad and this is bad so you know here <laughs> your bosishta is saying i am giving you the advice the highest advice in the yoga vasis to what we are reading but it is only just a customary 
tradition to honor the tradition because this wisdom should go from teacher to student i am telling you but the wisdom you want to gain the wisdom in yourself in your life to absorb that it is not like google search medicine and uh, as i have described uh, it has good medicine and it will have its effect no this the spiritual medicine what the vasishta is giving to rama there is no side effect of it <laughs> no reaction in it really it will work it will work it will cure the disease and the disease is the ignorance ignorance will be wiped out but we have doubt and when is doubt it does not work. you clear the doubt that's okay you question you understand but your effort is the most so here is important shishya pragna eva to kevalam to have your own experience it is your wisdom your eye of wisdom your intelligence your receptibility your purity of the mind that is the primary focus you see look at ramakrishna's gospel and you find how many people came when ramakrishna is giving their inspiration no and ramakrishna one day said what you want to serve you want to do good to others who are you to do good to the world eh? it is god say not doing good to our, our compassion but say service many people in the same audience there and vivekananda the young man he got a message out of it and when he going back home with another brother sarodananda he said you know i got a what a grand message today and he said what grand message we heard so many things what the grand about it well don't you hear what he said if mother gives me opportunity one day i will preach this to the nooks and corners of the world and that is this philosophy service to man is service to god direct service there is good but service to man think that service it is serving god see pragga the wisdom of narendra was so clear it just got that message and this whole ramakrishna movement this vedanta movement started by vivekananda on this principle it's called the practical vedanta not after death post mortem spirituality here and now whom you see you just think that you are serving god if you may not understand faith have faith and serve like that so that was the beautiful idea so sishya what is said method of instruction by guru etc to the disciple these are all merely to honor the tradition which we got from our gurus we got they got from their guru is a tradition coming now no it is like the pure ganga water flowing from the high himalayas which is called gomuk you know gomuk gomuk is the place where it is like a cow face in the high himalayas and from there the glacier the stream pure water coming down and to the plains it come it's this it's called the holy ganga so the the pure ganga starting from there you come down come down and the plains you will find that it has become dirty it looks dirty but the purifying power which is within have not lost a little bit that's why you know whole hindu tradition before sitting for any auspicious thing we sprinkle ganges water huh? why it's so pure potent it is there it may not be that clean like the glacier in the high himalayas but the potential power is the same it is a channel that's why the spiritual tradition spiritual tradition of wisdom and knowledge which is flowing started from it is says narayana is a there is a prayer who are the gurus the narayana the lord narayana and give it to na brahma and brahma to vasishta vasishta to shakti shakti to his son parasara parasara to his son vasu it is a tradition 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 coming down and gaurapada govindapada shankaracharya and then coming down 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 tatapuri ramakrishna puri ramakrishna to 
this channel to channel to us. So what is coming? Coming the eternal power, the, the tra transforming power coming down and it's going on in this flow and sprinkling that water that means absorbing those ideas in life and just following the instruction accepting the meaning of it by proper wisdom not intellect but the heart ready to absorb the teaching that is very important for liberation so yoga vasishta has given us the idea the wisdom the sharp intellect which is fit for discernment is the only pure and that is the cause for liberation so without the extremely pure and subtle intellect of the disciple which is capable of comprehending the truth all instructions are meaningless futile it is like when when one can absorb this ideal what is that he also come shankara charge says that that, that uh, you have your one necklace in your neck sakan pe upi sthitam vastu jathana prapati bhramat you will not get god god is not an object to have you in your life rather it was here like a necklace in your neck hanging but you are searching it for everywhere and not looking here the teacher only guides say hey, it is here here touch it have it and then the knowledge comes so it says bhramante prapati tadvat atma upi guru vakkata by guru's teachings what happens the atman which is ever attained is already there here is that consciousness without that consciousness you could not blink your eyes you cannot hear you cannot feel heat and cold you cannot have any emotions joy suffering nothing is possible it is here all the time day time night time sleeping time it is constantly that consciousness is here so it says it is like the atman which is ever attained though it appears to be unattained due to ignorance reveals as attained regained as it were due to the instruction received from the teacher as if like this necklace in your neck so it is to attain means not to go somewhere to get as we understand normally attaining attaining means removing the ignorance that you have not it when you know that it is that is your attainment and this wiping out this ignorance is the near need the mantra and the mantra have been chanted millions billions trillion times by the holy people of all different spiritual students because of their strong practice and it, it a mantra has generated tremendous power you know in the ordinary words also it generates power is it not the people use new slangs you go to the uh, gang people using new slangs huh? they start first one says something bad but anyhow everyone says that everyone says that and then afterwards if that what is told pointed towards me i'll be so angry and i'll go with the fist are this a word why are you getting so mad because uttering the same word with a particular meaning in it it creates generates such, such power in it so it can give us joy it can give us pain and suffering so a mantra is such this a pure mantra repeating that many people have been successful in removing their their darkness or ignorance that's opened up and as a result they understood they are divine so this is the mantra and mantra is very powerful mantra is to be chanted in the particular way it is to be chanted and with all devotion understanding its meaning what is the meaning many people will say what is the meaning meaning is god nothing else entire mantra means what that pure essentially pure consciousness and bliss that you call in a particular name and form is your chosen ideal or in the form or formless whatever aspect you think that is the meaning so mantra guru and disciple guru gives us the instruction not 
creating on his own mind it he should that's why he should know the scriptures he should know the tradition that's why it is called tradition without tradition the mantra will not be effective because it may be successful may not be successful but in the tradition in the channel thousands and thousands and thousands of seekers of truth have tested verified that's why called spirituality is a science it is verified it is verifiable so we get that channel and we practice in our way with faith trust understanding not only intellectual understanding intellect should be clarified but not to stuck there go beyond and feel his presence the divine presence by the repetition of the mantra charge the body and mind with spiritual current the whole body will be charged with the mantra mantra will resonate you know swami swadhananand ji he used to talk about throw your mantra in your eyes let your man i start repeating by reading in the mantra throw your mantra in your ear huh so but that means mantra is such a powerful thing let whole body resonate in that mantra vibrate in that mantra that's called mantra japa huh? the power of mantra so there are this wonderful inspiration to so it is in our life we need some teacher to guide first of all but we should also prepare ourselves for that and without having pre- what is the preparation preparation that i want to know the truth sincerity i want i have seen everything i have known so many things but that still keeps me in the dark blindness i want to know that and when we get that message to absorb 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 and then see how transformation comes and as sami vivekananda says it is a transformation huh eh? it is we can the uh, state of perfection we are destined to have and the thought of what we are we we are of the past so we can shape our character and we can have a new character built up spiritual character apart from our physical nature and physical character and the divine character so guru mantra and the disciples earnestness all match together brings a wonderful blending in life and that frees us from all bondage thank you om kai navacha manushendri airva बुद्ध्यात्मना प्रकृति स्वभाव करोमि जज्जत शकलं परस्मै नारायणायेति समर्पयामि ओम शांति 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 ही व्हाट एवर वी डू टू आवर बॉडी स्पीच एंड माइंड सेंसेस इंटेलेक्ट सोल और थ्रू द इनेट नेचर ऑफ टेंडेंसीज all that we dedicate as an offering to you the supreme lord our salutation to you on peace 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 be unto us all